my friends to another math video. Woohoo! Yeah! Woo! What do we have here? Yeah! A little downhill skiing. Woohoo! Yeah! Bring on the snow, my friends. Yeah! Well, let's take a look at our lesson. Our lesson is 5.3. That's right. And we are looking at the topic of estimating quotients. So we're in the section of division, my friends. Yeah, I like division. Anyways, we have an essential question, and the essential question says, how can you estimate decimal quotients? Well, that makes kind of obvious sense since the topic is estimate quotients. But now, it is time to unlock the problem. That's right. It's real world, baby. Real world problem right here, my friends. Here we go. This is Carmen likes to ski. Ski resort where she goes to ski got three and two tenths feet of snow during a five day period. It says the average daily snowfall for a given number of days is the quotient of the total amount of snow and the number of days. Then it says to estimate the average daily snowfall. Okay, there's a lot here in this problem. I think we need to unpack it a little bit. First of all, they put the word average in italics. This must be significant. We need to understand what average means. It says that the average daily snowfall for a given number of days is the quotient, which we know is the answer, of a division problem. But the total amount of snow is our dividend. So it's like, that's our dividend. Our quotient is going to be our answer. And so the average daily snowfall for a given number of days is going to be the answer of that dividend then three and two tenths feet of snow and the number of days and we have a five day period that is what the average is so now let's kind of make this make a little bit more sense so we're just saying that we got all this snow it all fell this amount during this amount of period of time if we divide that that's going to give us the average daily snowfall does not mean that's how much snow fell on each day but just the average all right and then let's move on down so it says you can estimate decimal quotients by using compatible numbers. When choosing compatible numbers, you can look at the whole number part of a decimal dividend or rename the decimal dividend as tenths or hundredths. The purpose of estimating is to get a good rounded number and to make it easy to add, subtract, divide, or multiply. In this case, we're dividing. And you can see if we were to take three and two tenths divided by five, we wouldn't get a whole number as an answer. We'd end up getting a part of a whole or a decimal. And that's not what we're looking for in this activity. What we're doing in this activity and our focus is about estimating the decimal quotient. Okay, but we need to use compatible numbers. And compatible numbers are numbers that they get along, right? They're numbers that like each other because they make something significant like six and four make a 10 and 10 and 10 make a 20. And these are just numbers that make it really easy for us to do some mental math. All right, so let's look at this. It says estimate three and two tenths divided by five. It says Carly and her friend Marco each find an estimate. Since the divisor is greater than the dividend, they both first rename three and two tenths as tenths. You can see the five is greater than the dividend, the three. That forces us into having to regroup or rename. So three and two tenths is going to be equal to, you guessed it, my friends, 32 tenths. Yes, very easy. Now, since Carly's estimate, she said 30 tenths is close to 32 tenths and divides easily by five. It does. Use a basic fact to find 30 tenths divided by five. Well, 30 tenths divided by five is going to equal to six. And we're going to say that's six tenths. Or we can write that in the standard form of the zero in the ones place, decimal six, six tenths. So the average daily snowfall is about, you guessed it, six tenths foot. Okay, and that's about a half a foot, so that's about six inches, turns out. Now, Marco's estimate, a little bit different. He chose 35. Now, he knows 35 is compatible with five because 35 divided by five equals seven. So here again, it says 35 tenths is close to 32 tenths. It divides easily by five. Use a basic fact to find that. We already did that. So 35 tenths divided by five is seven. Seven tenths or, right, the zero with a decimal point and seven, seven tenths. So the average daily snowfall is about 
7 tenths foot. Now it says we have to interpret the result. Whose estimate do you think is closer to the exact quotient? And we have to explain our reasoning. Okay, well, that's a great question. Because they're both pretty reasonable estimates, they, they found compatible numbers, but 30 and 35 are definitely two different uh, estimated dividends there. That's what we basically did there. Uh, I would probably say maybe it's Carly's estimate. I mean, her estimate, 30 is closer to 32 than 35 is. And now both Carly and Marco did use the same divisor. But I think because Carly's estimated uh, a dividend of 30 tenths is close to 32, I would say that her answer is a little bit more reasonable. Okay, next it says explain how you would rename the dividend 29 and 7 tenths divided by 40 to choose compatible numbers and estimate uh, the quotient. Well, I would need to rename that, uh, regroup 29 and 7 tenths just into tenths, and that would be 297 tenths. But now I need to divide by 40. That's not very compatible, 297 with 40. So I think what I would probably do, I think the easiest would be just to maybe move the 297 down to 280 because 28 and four are compatible. That would give me like a 70. Yeah, I would change the 297 tenths to 280 tenths divided by 40. That's gonna give me seven tenths or 320 tenths is another option because 32 and four. So I could also do 30, 320 tenths divided by 40. That would give me eight tenths. And just a reminder, all I'm doing is I'm look closely at that 297. Really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take that number and I'm trying to make it so that 40 will go into that number without a remainder. Now I don't have to focus on 40, I can just focus on the first two digits of that large number. So by looking at the 29, 29 and four, they're not compatible. Uh, 30 and four are not compatible. But when you go up to 32, 32 and four are compatible because we can get eight and then you can drop down to 28, right? And that's gonna be compatible with four as well. And there we go. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now we have estimate with two digit divisors. Ooh, scary. Ah. When you estimate quotients with compatible numbers, the number you use for the dividend can be greater than the dividend or less than the dividend, which we showed that in the last problem. It have to be like 297, we can go up or we can go down. Example. A group of 31 students is going to visit the museum. The total cost for the tickets is $144.15. About how much money will each student need to pay for a ticket? All right. Now it does say use a whole number greater than the dividend. Okay. It says use 30 for the divisor. Then find a number close to and greater than $144.15 that divides easily by 30. And you can see the example they show here. Yeah, they have that $144.15. They move that up to 150. By changing that number and changing the divisor to 30, look how easy that is now. If we were to drop those two powers of 10, we would simply have, that's right, five. So each student will pay about, because we're just estimating, five dollars there we go b is use a whole number less than the dividend use 30 for the divisor then find a number close to and less than 144 dollars and 50 cents that divides easily by 30. okay 120 is lower than 144 but we still have two compatible numbers we have the 12 and the 3 very compatible okay it gives us four so that means each student will pay about four dollars for a ticket. Mathematical practice two says, it says that you can reason abstractly and quantitatively. It says, I can use reasoning habits to help me contextualize and decontextualize problems. And this mathematical practice is so, sometimes gives difficulty to students understanding these words. So let's understand what contextualize and decontextualize means. Contextualize says, it says, I can take numbers and put them in a real world context. So if you had, for the example, like three times two and a half equals seven and a half, you could say, I walk two and a half miles per day for three days. You've contextualized it. You took a problem that had a, uh, in this case, a multiplication equation, and you brought it into real words. But it also says you can decontextualize them. You can take the numbers out of context. So that walking problem, then you can put that into a multiplication uh, sentence, or I like the word equation, okay? It says use reasoning 
which estimate do you think will be a better estimate of the cost of a ticket? Explain your reasoning. Okay, I, I think I, I'm going to go with a $5 estimate, mostly because it's better to know the greater estimate to make sure that you have enough money for the ticket. Okay, in this case, if we were to estimate that and go with the one that was the $120 divided by 30 up above here, well, what if the that estimate was too low and then you go and then you didn't have enough money? So that's what I would say for that reasoning. Okay, time for share and show. That's right. It's time for you to get out your little math board. Yeah, that's right. It could just consist of a piece of paper and a pencil. <laughs> but if you actually have yourself a nice little math board, hey, by all means, use that math board. Let's solve these problems first and then go ahead and take a look at what I thought were some good compatible numbers. Okay, so use compatible numbers to estimate the quotient. Okay, so look at here. I have my just my one-digit divisor. So I'm really just going to be looking at my one-digit divisor here and then also my two-digit number here. I'm not really interested in the eighth. The eight-tenths is pretty small value. And I'm going to think of my times table. You know, what well, could I multiply nine? It's going to get me close to 28 because I want these to be compatible so I can divide easily. Nine times four is 36. That's a little bit big. What about nine times three? 27. That's pretty close. So I would actually just, I think I would use 27 divided by nine equals three. Now for number two, now we have a two-digit divisor. And sometimes that could be a little bit more confusing. Well, we want to go ahead and rename the divisor first. So let's make that easy. And that would be 40. Now I'm working kind of reverse. And I can see right away, if I were to just change 393 to 400, oh, that would be really compatible, wouldn't it? Yeah, you have to love that one. 400 divided by 40? Yeah. Hmm, let me think. Could that maybe be 10? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Oh, my goodness. Did that video just fly by? It was like, whoo. Hey, my friends, again, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that you come and you watch these videos with me and that I can't really uh, talk to you because it is a video, you know, and it's kind of hard to have that kind of communication. But thank you for all your very kind comments. Now, my friends, live long and prosper.